Esports in 30, where we take a deeper dive into all your favorite esports. Today, brace yourselves for gunfight and drama because it's Call of Duty, baby. I'm Marissa Roberto, and the man sitting to my left is Zurich Eduela, and are both uh, so hyped to talk Fort Worth. You like how I added a little Italian twist yeah, to your yeah, last name? Yeah, it's, it's more Spanish, but... It's okay. okay. You know what, it's okay. Whatever, man. How did you have a COD this weekend? <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> that tournament was just unpredictable and not even just the tournament. The yeah. entire aftermath of it was insane. Uh, yeah, you and I definitely were teased. I've been reading some of those tweets and just on Reddit. My God, amazing. so much. And the beautiful coffee pasta that JCAP has given us to use forever and always. But uh, we've got a friend of calling in to give us their insight on the actual tournament itself. And until then, let's get fired up with some highlights. It's a 2v1 with 15 seconds left. It's down to the new man. It's down to Dylan. 1v1. Dylan has to reload. What did you have there? Where's the gunfight? Abizi now the only guy up. Uh, one of the hardest gunfights to change to try and take him off a of bomb. But he wins one. He's on it though. He's halfway through and he slides he in. It. Kills he him off it. of it. And that's all he needed to do. Oh, Lambo, 30 seconds remaining. Accuracy's picking up kills on the players by Rock. That's going to slow the pressure from the front. Bomber though. Tempest is oh. up. Wait oh. a minute! What? What? A goes in. Kenny able to get another one! Kenny going huge. He's close to streaks, and this could be it. Reciprocity just have to race in. But Kenny! Kenny! Kenny lights him up! Oh, he's back in. Speaking of Chino, here it is. Here he is. Trying to turn things around. A couple kills back to back. Potential for some streaks if he's able to find the kill mid map. He's going to have to heal though. Hardpoint still contested. 85. One more will do it. Ask and you shall receive. Gino! That's a bad, bad man if you've ever seen one. One player left standing. It's Dashy. He does get. Oh my god, what a snipe. 1v1. 15 seconds to work with. Got him! Got him! What a play from Dashy! But he's close enough, Ben. I think we're supposed to be able to close this out right now. Oh, what a Dylan shot. Dylan is disgusting. What a shot. Dylan is, the, that's what you picked him up for. Attach lines up a pair. One player left in Kenny. He's, He's down. got a clutch. Oh, down. Oh, he gets away. But they line up. They line up. It's a one versus one. And he gets get it. Them, Kenny. Gunless now in with the help. They only need two seconds. That may do it. There's one player remaining. He is dead. And there's the championship. Your CWL forward 2019 champs. Luminosity! Fort Worth gave us a lot to talk about, and so has the aftermath. So who better to help us than Caster Philip, Momo Whitfield. How goes it, buddy? Uh, so far, so good. I'm, uh, I'm getting after that, that post land blues, if you like. I'm uh, a little bit sad it's over, but it was a great event. I'm happy to uh, look forward to London now, and uh, yeah, it was a great event. I mean, for sure, yeah, post land blues, but I guess we don't, re we really didn't have any blues. We didn't have a chance to have the blues because the COD scene just gives us so much to hold <laughs> on to. So I have to ask you straight up, are you COD burner? Uh, I was asked this question actually multiple times uh, <laughs> during the actual event. Uh, my answer still remains no, uh, sadly. And oh. uh, yeah, that, that's as simple as that. Um, uh, I have way too, I have too many things going on to, to have that much time to dedicate to that. Fair enough. Right. Just like stirring the pot. I yeah. love that you guys have a gossip That's what the cod burner would say, right? Surely? <laughs> I'm not sure. Y yeah, it's very sus, very <laughs> sus. Deny, deny, yeah, deny. Yeah, all right, let's get into it. We're going to start with LG, obviously. Sure. Um, Gunless okay. was just, you know, doing gunless doing things. Gunless, yeah. yeah. Um, what do you think did the squad do right in this event that mm. made them such a dominant force? Uh, there's a couple of things with Luminosity. Um, obviously, their pro league, they didn't have the best pro league. They were pretty much neutral across the board. But going into Fort Worth, uh, we saw Classic with the Rampart kind of changing the meta straight up. Uh, he was very comfortable. We saw him kind of skyrocketing his stats individually. But I do feel it was just kind of uh, a coming together of whatever on new LG had. You know, when LG made this roster, it was all about these five players, you know, the amount of talent on this roster. And we didn't see it at Fort Worth, sorry, we didn't see it at Vegas. We didn't see it really in the Pro League, but it was just like Gunless at his best, formal, you know, proving everyone wrong. Uh, even John, you know, John in specific game modes was incredible. And I think it was very hard to stop. There's a few kind of mishaps along the way. They didn't have to play everyone, shall we say, 100 Thieves, Ox Gaming, but, you know, credit where credit is due. They uh, certainly were the best team. 
Fair enough, and they take home that trophy, of course. Um, but we should talk about Splice because they must be frustrated. Like, Tent has <laughs> insane numbers. The team seems like it's kind of greater than some of its parts. So they like they almost fell to Reciprocity's losers run. So how exactly did they get over the final hurdle of winning that match in an 0-2 scenario? A splice, um, it's, it's a tough one with Splice, you know. Uh, Jude is the only European on there. I'm always rooting for him, obviously, an ex-teammate of mine. And it, it just seems like they can dispatch a team so easily. But when it kind of comes to that final herd, you know, it, it's winning that championship. And I don't think they played, you know, specifically bad. Uh, I just think they were outclassed on the day. Uh, I've got a lot of high hopes for Splice going into the likes of London, uh, cross-divisional play in Pro League as well. But they definitely have that that talent on that roster to win a championship this year. Um, what was the question about reciprocity? Sorry. Oh well, I mean, I just wanted you to give us your overview of Splice and maybe what they must be feeling because oh, of uh, yeah. yeah, how they almost fell to reciprocity. It, it is tough. I think with reciprocity, they had an insane run. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, every single game kind of went to that game five. I don't want to say it's luck. I want to kind of give them that kind of. X Factor clutch, if you like. You know, these guys came out on top so many times. But again, going up against Splice, it, it was... It's tough for them, but I think they exceeded expectations, them being reciprocity. Splice, though, they, they just, they have to keep hungry. They have to keep going and chasing that kind of first place, that trophy, and mm -hmm. obviously the big check as well. Definitely. Yeah, let's move on to reciprocity because mm. we're talking about them already. Uh, they lost to Enigma 6, I think, very early, and then they just went through every single game five, bit, beat UIU, Genji, 100 Thieves, uh, then Red Reserves, and mm -hmm. then finally losing to Splice yeah. in a very, very tight game. Was there a single player or a, a something that, that kind of stood out for you in what uh, they were think, doing? Yeah, I think there definitely was. I was lucky enough to cast, I think it was the Saturday night, it was like midnight, and they lost to E6 3-0, and I was like, okay, that was a quick game back to bed, back to the hotel. And then from there, it might even be a Friday night, but they they just kept getting pushed. And the reason that I think it kept going to the game fives is they were going up against tough competition. I don't think reciprocity were a team that just kind of wiped teams away, like your splice, your LG, your optics or, or, or such. Um, but I do think the, the change that they made between, obviously, Vegas and now was the, the change from Dens, the Australian player, uh, and brought in Dylan, which was another new kind of up-and-coming UK-based player. And he kind of had, you know, this different type of energy towards him. And I think that kind of radiated through his squad. We saw, obviously, him and Wuskins going off together. Yeah. Uh, we saw him and uh, him and Zed kind of battling it back and two. But it was always him and someone. Uh, and I think he was kind of the shining star of the roster. But he's just, he's surrounded by great players. Tommy's probably one of the, probably the most experienced European Call of Duty player there is right now. And he's just fit right in. And sometimes, you know, it is kind of that piece of the puzzle that they needed. Um, and, it, and it just fits so so perfectly. But again, it, it's just such tough, tough competition. How do they keep going to those game fives and winning? I was actually a little worried because that can't happen every time. You know, you're going to go to those game fives and you're going to lose. You know, you need to close it out in three or four sometimes. I, I do want to talk about this twin rivalry, though, because it just makes me so happy, especially seeing their back and forth on Twitter constantly uh, on each <laughs> other, but also supporting each other so much. But I have to ask, though, do you have a favorite twin? Oh, it would be unfair to pick. Um, <laughs> first of all, I will say I love both of them. They're, they're at the, the very top of social media yes. for me. Like these are the, If someone says, who do I follow in the, the Call of Duty scene? You know, I'm straight to Scraps and Wuskins. For sure. And... I also love, I love kind of the, the banter back and forward between them, but I've also never seen, you know, two brothers get along so well. You know, I feel a lot is kind of a front for Twitter as in, you know, they're, they're going at it, but as soon as they lose or as soon as something happens, it's all love, it's all friendship. Um, I, I think Scraps actually tweeted, you know, you, you learn so much from playing someone like your brother. Sure. And... I, I also like how it's 1-1 now. You know, the tied up, yep. the beat each other once. So I'm excited for the rematch. Uh, but both definitely characters. I couldn't, I couldn't pick a favorite. That's just, that's a tough question. I was just setting you up to fail there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, I, I, both are very different, both very unique, um, but both were great players too. All right. Um, let's move on to 100 Thieves mm -hmm. that finally seemed like they 
pulled it together. They had insane search and destroy stats, mm -hmm. uh, and then Pharaoh took over Priesta after he threw up. Oh yeah! Oh my gosh! Is he okay? He's okay now. Um, I was actually, I'm very good friends with Priest's girlfriend, actually, and I was kind of chatting to her. She was distraught, bless her. Um, but yeah, going back to the original point, 100 Thieves, it, it was almost theirs to win, I, I feel. And, you know, with Optic falling very short, uh, very soon, United dropping out, I was like, this is the chance for 100 Thieves to, to just make that grand final, you know, make it into... Mm. The, the spotlight and then I come in I think it was Sunday morning I hear the news about Priester who I very much compared to the likes of Dylan you know on reciprocity he is that kind of crazy X factor that goes off mm -hmm. um, stuff like this happens and it really really does suck I, I hope obviously I mean, I mean he's got to be fine for the next one I think it was yeah. just like a weekend thing um, but again I think um, Pharaoh got a little bit of unnecessary hate, you know. If he if he wasn't there, they they forfeit games. You know that's what it was like when I was back in uh, when I was a player. Luckily they had uh, you know Pharaoh to even jump in and, and try and play. And, and credit to him, he tried his best. But and that's never gonna work when you drop a player. You know that you don't want them in the team, and then suddenly they're, they're sat next to you. You're playing against the best in the world. It's never gonna end well. Um, I do want to get into a little bit of the drama that happened afterward. Um, obviously, like, it's just a lot of back and forth on Twitter. And really, like, for me as a fan looking in, it gives us so much tea to sip. And we're like, we are loving every second of it. But but to get to the basics, <laughs> I did, I, I watched Clay's um, vlog that he put out yesterday because he just had, he just wanted to clear the air. But like on your, mm -hmm. but you're on your end of things with the casters, because I see the casters jumping in as well in it, because they want to get on the fun too. It's, yeah, it's pretty. But it's all juicy. It's so juicy. It's juicy. Like, like for you guys, obviously you know the relationships, you have a closer understanding of what these guys are going through on stage, off stage. Like for you guys, what is this drama like for you? Do you want more of it? Do you want to see this kind of fizzle out and not have it aired out on Twitter this way? I I think. Good drama is great. Mm -hmm. um, I think this one is very specific, and I, I don't. I, I've kind of followed it on Twitter. I never try and jump in too much. It's not my my kind of place to do that. I, I love good drama, you know, teams and rivalries and going at it. But when it's teammates, I yeah. feel like it's almost. I almost get that awkwardness, and I'm mm -hmm. like, this needs to stop. Like this should be dealt with behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. But I also understand for you, you know your average viewer. You know, this is what's going to keep them glued to their mm -hmm. screen. They want to know. Um, I actually watch. Uh, I was starting to watch Clay's video this morning, actually, before jumping on on board with you guys. Yeah. And, and, and he said something about picking a side. Yeah. And I think that's what I dislike about it in, in a way, which it splits fans. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, if if Cap goes on one team and they play United, that's going to be such a good game. And oh yeah. It, there's good points, there's bad points. Uh, I wish some of it wasn't on Twitter, but uh, again, for, for my job, I, I stay out of it. I sneak, sneakily read it all and, uh, and enjoy the good bits, I guess. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Momo, to close things out, we just have a few quick fan questions for you. So this is from KSizen89. <laughs> um, what team or teams had the most surprising performances at Fort Worth? Uh, Fort Worth, 100% luminosity. Um, was the biggest surprise for me. Mm -hmm. I, I, but on the other, cent, other end of the scale, E United and Optic, you know, one great, two very poor performances. Uh, looking across the board, though, a lot of roster changes happened. Things like Midnight, Accelerate, everything mm -hmm. kind of blew up. So I'm really disappointed we didn't get to see kind of how good Midnight would be. But the biggest surprise for me was Luminosity doing so, so good. Uh, and Optic E United kind of falling off. Shout out to Reciprocity. Again, third place for these guys. I didn't expect that either. Oh, my God. And just so many amazing storylines that we can take now just moving forward. Um, I do have another one here from underscore Benji underscore. How hard is it for you guys to have a positive mental mind state with how negative the COD community can actually be? What do you do to overcome the negativity? Uh, it, it, I, there is obviously negativity everywhere. Um, I, I think one thing you've got to do is kind of check why you're here. Uh, I always say to myself, the reason that I move across the world, do this as a, as a job is because I love it. And I just kind of direct my passion in terms of the games and the players. And as I'm casting this game uh, and during a match, like something will happen and I'll freak out like I'm a fan. You know, I still am a fan of this game and I still love, you know, the, the whole franchise itself. So I just, as simple as it sounds, block out the negativity. Mm -hmm. 
focus on the good stuff and always kind of remember, you know, why you started this and, and why you do what you do, really. Oh, my gosh. Amazing life advice. Perfect way to end things with you, Momo. Thank you so much for joining us today. That was spicy. I'm glad you were here to break it all down. Thank you very much for having us. It's, uh, it's been a lot of fun and uh, excited for CWL London. But, yeah, thank you very, very much for having me. But you didn't think we just had one guest, did you? Heck nah. We've got a super special man calling in in just one second. Who, well, um, this montage might give you a little hint. Ten to five now. Fuller finds one. Slacked. Oh my. With a great two piece. It's Ten only six feet five. But Slacked, he's got the grab slap. He's just waiting. And here it is. We'll find two. Grapple with you. Jernaka come in, Jernaka go down. Slack finds two. Aqua gets ripped. 1v1 now. It's an event, he comes out, and Slack takes the gun fight. Oh, a little bit underperforming, doesn't know who to shoot right now. That means Slack saw in hand, slips and slides, and finds himself with the double. And for Luminosity, Slack is going to six. They got a flood, and now Slack has a grab slam to go over top. Gonna use it to find one. Shuts down the second, gets the streaks, and they get the game. Quick contest. Can Slack hold on the point? He does get Looney. Also finds Jerd. Nice two piece for him. This man seems unstoppable right now. Grab slab comes in at Slack. He's putting a new name on the Slack slam here. It's just not enough time to defuse anyway. And Slack wins the gun fight in the end. Here it is. Perfect positioning for the Slack Sam. He connects with two. Two shoot for the contest comes in. Grab slam finds the double and Slack finds two. Focus on the other foot. High up the sky. And there's two. 45. He got Slack been back. Wait, wins wait. the first gun fight. Has the teammates for the help. The bait is gonna be there. 7.87 seconds. The flank is on. Slack finds a double. Slack could have found three. Your CWL forward 2019 champs. Luminosity. He held that trophy high in Texas as Luminosity Gaming walked away the champ of Fort Worth. Welcome the one, the only, Slacked. <laughs> How's it going? Hi, how you doing? Good, good. We're so happy to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations again, by the way. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Let's get into it. So you just popped off in the grand finals there. What happened? Did you toggle aimbot on? <laughs> yeah, we, we just flipped the switch, honestly. The tournament was going good for us. Um, and then came Sunday, we really kicked up as a team. I started playing really well individually, and so did the team, and uh, we took home the trophy. Well, Splice took uh, a game from you guys from, I mean, I guess during pools. What did you learn from that loss to actually help you for the finals? Um, going into the match uh, versus them in pool play, it was kind of like a match that didn't really mean anything considering we were already 2-0, and they were 2-0, and um, and it was just for first or second in the pools. And we knew if we won or lost, like I said, we were still coming out and uh, we didn't want to really like reveal, I guess, too much of what we did and like show our strong suits. So we just kind of went into it with, uh, you know, whatever happens, happens. If we won it, we won it. If we lost it, we weren't going to stress and be upset with each other. Um, and I think that really showed in the finals. We played a similar map set and uh, we ended up winning all the maps that we really lost, so can't really complain there. I love that. Do you guys have just that kind of um, camaraderie with your team where you just always try to keep your head above water, like don't stick in the drama at all? When you guys finish your matches, what is the team, what is your camaraderie like? Like, are you bigging each other up or do you guys stay silent? How does it work for you guys? Um, honestly, yeah, it's really important to pick each other up mm -hmm. and just like keep the vibes good. I think in Call of Duty, it's like super important just because it's such a momentum game. If you start and playing really well as a team and doing really well um, together, you kind of just ride that momentum through the whole tournament. And that's kind of just really important when you're at a tournament, like I said, just keep the vibes high, you know, make sure you're gassing everyone up, telling everyone they're playing great um, and making sure that communication's there with your teammates. And usually the weekend goes good when you do that. So you guys kind of had a, a bad start in mm. the in the pro league, but um, uh, what kind of mindset do you need to have? I mean, did you guys have mm. leading up to the uh, the event to pull yourself back together? Mm. Uh, we had a really stuff to the, or start bad start, I guess, to the pro league um, because we just weren't playing well together. We were honestly considering like a roster change, and towards the end of it, we kind of used that time as. Uh, a place really to just put our thoughts together, how we're going to play the game, if you know we're going to continue teaming or whatnot. And to end the Pro League, we actually ended 3-1 uh, and one in our last four matches. So we kind of rode off that momentum, uh, like I said, going into Fort Worth, and we knew what we were capable of, and we kind of put everyone's like ego check aside, so we need to start putting in a lot more hard work, watching VOD together, 
um, going over other teams before we played them, things like that. And we just, like I said, did all of that going into Fort Worth, studied the teams that we were going to be playing in pool play, um, and then obviously studied the teams that we were going to be playing in bracket play each night before we played them, and that really helped, and I think that showed at the tournament. I mean, hell yes. I mean, not to mention you've got a boy like Gunless uh, just popping off. How does it feel to play alongside him when he's just going off like that? Um, it feels really good. He's probably one of the most talented teammates I've ever had uh, individually to team with. And I don't know, just what he brings to the table is really important. Uh, I think he's got things he like is working on as far as like um, just like bringing the communication and helping being a better teammate. But I think he is just incredible talent wise. And that brings so much firepower to the team as far as just confidence, knowing someone's always going to do good and bring up those really good stats and stuff like that. So it definitely helps um, having that on our team. How do you how do you feed his fire? Because mm -hmm. some players are kind of like you have to just leave them alone. Yeah. They're on fire already. You just you don't do anything to them. You say and, nothing. Yeah, you say yeah. nothing. But some players you kind of have to be like you know pat in the back. Good job. <laughs> good job. You know what type of what type of character is he? Um, honestly, we just we, like I said, we just gas him up. We just mm -hmm. send him good vibes and tell him you know you're doing good, whatever. Like mid map or we just tell him to keep doing what he's doing. I mean if he's Dropping those numbers, like you said, sometimes you don't need to say anything. Sometimes you want to hear, you know, words of like maybe affirmation telling him he's doing great and to keep it up or whatever. But I mean, other than that, it's nothing too crazy. I mean, he's just a teammate like everyone else in the squad. And we just, you know, try and uh, keep that riding through the tournament. I love that. His love language is words of affirmation. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Classic was really defying the meta. Why did he stick out the rampart? Um, honestly, it was something we looked at like online a little bit. We kind of tested out the gun and we knew like it would be all right, but uh, we didn't think it would be as good as it was. And like Friday, he wasn't really using it. Saturday, he pulled it out uh, when we started our bracket matches. And he had like a really crazy good map with it. And when he did that, he was like, I'm going to use this the rest of the tournament. We were like, all right, go for it. Like whatever's working for you, we're not going to stop you, obviously. Um, so go for it. And he started using it like the whole tournament kind of changed the meta. I think it was honestly in people's heads because it was kind of like a thing like a gun people aren't using and uh, they did like a listen in with Splice and they were just calling out the player and what gun he had and no one really ever does that. So I think it was just like a kind of tilting factor to other teams and we just rode with it. I like that. So do you hope that this gun stays then in the meta? Uh, yeah, I mean, I do for my teammates' sake. Mm -hmm. I don't use the gun personally. I don't think anyone else does on our team, but it's kind of at this point, whatever my teammate wants to run and if he wants to use it, go for it. If not, you know, it is what it is. None of us use it, like I said, other than him. So we'll, uh, we'll kind of see where that one goes. Okay. What a supportive teammate. I love it. Yeah. Words of affirmation. Yeah, very good, very good. Um, so you kind of have a, um, a um, reputation for yeah. being kind of like just under the radar. A little quiet. Uh, yeah, because, you know, the, the, the COD scene is very loud I guess. <laughs> well, certain, uh, certain members of the cause scene are very loud yes. yeah 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 um i mean do you like that um reputation just, that you have yeah, yeah just staying below that radar uh yeah i mean i just i tend to try and not get involved with too much drama i just mm -hmm. it doesn't really interest me and if people are popping off on twitter or arguing about whatever it is it just never really seems worth it to me to hop into it so i usually just kind of stay low-key and just do my thing do you like low-key take a side though when you stay low-key uh, yeah, I mean, it depends <laughs> on what it is, but I mean, usually someone's arguing a, a better side, I would say. It okay. just, uh, you know, everyone's got their points and arguments for whatever it is and kind of got to pick one side, I guess, right? Okay, I'll, I mean, I'll let you keep it still low-key and won't dive <laughs> too deep into it. Uh, I do want to talk more about your team, obviously, because I just want to know how you guys are so flawless on control. Um, honestly, that was a game mode since Vegas. Vegas, I think we went one and six on it. It was like our worst game mode at the entire tournament. Um, and then transitioning over to the Pro League and into this. Uh, at the Pro League, we only lost one control. We went six and one. And then at the event, I think we went like six or seven and two, something like that. So our overall count on it was like 12 and two, 13 and two, something like that. Um, we just really focused and broke the game mode down, kind of played to our strong suits. It's a game mode you can really do anything you want, really. Um, you can kind of get a lot of kills, or you can play for the capture points. And I think we just figured that out um, over most teams, really know when to, we have to, you know, play for the points and capture it, or when you need to play the kills. And uh, I think we found a really good way to, like, maneuver the map, basically spawn people in certain areas. And uh, like I said, just playing to our strong suits. And I think we just found a comfortable median for that. And right now we're just ahead in it.
refreshing. Yeah. Um, now we have to talk about the Slack Slam. The Slack Slam. Because all the casters were popping off every time you would get like two, <laughs> two to three kills and every time you use it. How do you feel about the skill being your new trademark? Mm. Um, honestly, I think it was like at the pro league when I got like the meme for the Slack Slam. It was just because I missed uh, several grab slams there. And it was because I hadn't really used the specialist too much. After Vegas, like I said, we switched up all our stuff. Um, and I had a lot of work to do individually of just when to use it in certain situations I hadn't played search and destroy with it too much and that's where it was happening um, But basically at the tournament I had had more practice under my belt I had about a month and a half of practice with it and really found out when to use it when it, uh, you know It's uh, necessary and things like that started figuring that out and it became pretty easy uh, Slacked our time is running short, but before you go we want to squeeze in just one fan question off social media for you This is from Gomez USA. How does it feel to overcome the challenges you guys face when people doubted you? Um, it definitely feels good. I think proving people that you know are just hating on you all the time It definitely feels good. Um, it's a self motivator for myself and definitely my teammates And uh, I think we're happy with where we are right now, but we're not gonna let up We're gonna keep trying to win championships and uh, go from here Beautiful. Thank you so it. much, Slack. Again, congrats on the huge win in Texas, and best of luck throughout the rest of the Pro League and beyond. Perfect. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Ugh, love him so much. Positivity. Keeping it on the positive, we're going to get to your player of the tournament, Zarek. It has to be gunless. He was phenomenal that entire weekend. I uh, 1.27 KD. Yeah. Very consistent throughout yeah. the entire tournament, and I mean, he's our Canadian boy. Ah, uh, he is a Canadian boy. I love him so much. But Zarek, I have to say to you though, like you specifically, um, I just don't like you anymore, and I think you're that. I think you're the most arrogant and self-centered person I've ever met. I mean, uh, is this your segue? Yeah, <laughs> segue. Uh, we're just uh, doing a little tea sipping, of course, because uh, the whole cock community after this tournament was on Reddit and on Twitter and just going back and forth because of the gossip girl in the Call of Duty community. So Codburner mm -hmm. put in a post, basically. You know, pitting teammate against teammate. This is all happening within e United. Accusations um, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, accusations being made. And then uh, JCap took to Twitter as well and was kind of putting Clay on blast, and Clay responded. And then finally, JCap gave us this wonderful tweet that is just being copy pasted out on every single thread ever, just basically admitting, like, you know what, maybe it wasn't you and it was Burns. Okay, um, yeah, basically I just don't like you and you're the most arrogant and self-centered person I've ever met. <laughs> you memorized that tweet already. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> it was a good one. It and it's also copy pasted everywhere. Yes. So just quickly, Zurich, uh, with ingesting all the information that's been going on, how do you feel about it? Do you like it? I love it. Oh, I good. love it. It makes me look forward to the next event. I just want to <laughs> see where this is going to lead. Um, I don't like that it kind of splits everybody, yeah. you know, like the fans apart, but, you know. Right, That's no, it's what true. Happens. I do like that JCap. I mean, in the end, was like, yeah, just think for yourselves. And and honestly, Clay did the same thing. He put a vlog out there as well, if you want to check it out. He's basically just saying, yeah, I don't want the drama. Mm -hmm. I, it's just kind of, especially teammate against teammate, it's not cool at all. And just think for yourselves, everybody. Like, don't take sides. This is a hive mind scenario that always happens. Read everything. Don't. It's just best if we just, from the outside looking in, don't point fingers. Let them sort it out themselves and just enjoy sipping the tea. That's mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. And that's all we're going to continue to do over here. Uh, Cod Talk has been spicy, as always, with you, Zurich. Uh, thank you so much to Momo and Slack for calling in. Thank you, of course, for sitting down with me. And thank you at home for watching. Make sure to join us next week to tune in for your next dose of Squad. You can hit us up on all the socials at Squad State. I will see you there.